Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Friedman Adventures, a really special one. My friend Greg Spector is here. Greg, it hey. is great to see you, my friend. Pleasure as always. Pleasure How's as always. everything? Everything's fantastic. It's another beautiful day in Southern California. Absolutely. So we, we, of course, talk about adventures here on Friedman Adventures. Fishing yeah. is definitely an right. adventure, but got a new twist to this one today. Right. Yeah. And I think it's a great twist. Why don't you tell us about what it is you want to accomplish? Uh, again, Greg Spector. Um, last summer I met Phil. Uh, on the I apologize for that. I hope, <laughs> it, wasn't, I hope it wasn't too traumatic. Uh, uh, you, you are a huge part of my sobriety and a huge part of my story, and I thank you. Um, you know, we, uh, w we were on the Malahini. I, uh, I, I guess start at the very beginning. I was, uh, I was about six or seven months sober at the time. Yeah. And, and I, uh, I hit a wall. You know, I got to the point where I was like, I, I, I wasn't in danger of, of relapsing. Um, but, you know, I woke up. I went to a meeting. I ate lunch, went to a meeting, came home, went to bed, woke up, did it again. I just, I felt like if this is sobriety, you know, you're not digging it. Kind of sucks. Yeah, you know just I mean? meetings <laughs> and yeah. Right. It was, I was bored. Essentially, is what I was. Yeah. Really, I was bored. I, I didn't. I felt like I had gotten past that that wall. Yeah. But I just, I just, it wasn't. It wasn't. Nothing was clicking for me. I yeah. just wasn't feeling it. So. Growing up, my dad had always taken me fishing. We started out in the Sierra Nevada, you yeah. know, with trout and whatnot. And then he made the the huge financial error of taking me out to out to the the sunken barge out out of San Pedro. Yeah, right. You know, and we went out there, and you drop the line with the five hooks. Oh my get, God! You know, yeah, and you fill and, it and up. You, you fill up your bag, and you kind. Of, I think I came back with like an eighteen inch, like you know red rockfish and, yeah and I was just it was the biggest thing I'd ever caught in my life and you were instantly it hooked it, it sounds it, like right? it, it, and your it, dad was financially fun. screwed from right, then on right I was eight <laughs> I was eight or nine years old yeah and so it had always been such a great thing of what my dad and I had done together right you know so I'd gotten like and and as I grew up but we went game fishing we'd go out of scent you know Cabo when I was in college and we'd go do these great things so it was always this warm part of my story and of course it was also a part of my drinking which was for my therapist, a little bit of a, of a snag. So I'm talking with her, and she says, you know, I really don't think you should go. And I'm like, I got to go. I got to do something. I got to do something different. Fishing, fishing and drinking went together for you. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. it went together you know, for like walk, a lot walk, of people. Walk, in the, walk in, the, in the galley at 5.30 in the morning and grab your first beer as you're... That late, huh? Uh, right, yeah. You know, <laughs> I, I had to drive there. You yeah. know, I like to be responsible for, you know, one-tenth of my day. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so... I'm, so I, I, I say, you know what, I'm going to do it. And I just go online and I basically am desperately seeking anybody that's got a spot at this point because it's July. Yeah. And, you know, the, the, the tuna are starting <clears> to come in and it's getting kind of filled up and the boats are a little bit tricky at that point. And I just see this spot is open on the Malahini. So I grab it. I'm going. And uh, I'm living in L.A., so I drive down, you know, I, I'm like, I'm not going to go spend the night and like, I'm just not going to add this layer of aggravation. I'm just going to drive down in the morning. So I leave home at like three drive down there, the boat's supposed to leave at 5.30, and I'm sitting in the galley, and Nick, who was the galley hand, and now is getting on deck this year. Right, time. right. Yeah. And uh, he and I are talking, and this guy, as if on cue, walks in at like 5.31. I'll take a beer. What beer do you have on this rig? Or how many? He goes, and, and Nick proceeds to tell him the four different types of beers and yeah. this and that. And he goes, well, I hope you have a lot because me and my friends are planning on drinking. <laughs> and Nick, Nick does some quick math in his head and says something like, you know, we have 280 cans of beer on board I think you know and there's only 18 anglers I think you'll be okay yeah yeah you know, and I said well you can knock it down to 17 because I'm not going to be drinking right, you know, right. And I'm just sitting there at one of the tables and I'm reading a book or doing whatever you do at 5 30 in the morning when you're not drinking <laughs> right and uh so Nick and I start talking and he tells me his story about how kind of fishing sort of helped him you know get over that hump and sobriety and he tells me that Bill's been sober and uh, the other deckhand, I can't remember, call his name. Uh, uh, what well, he was sober five years. Right. So I was basically I had, I had you know God shot. Chris, Chris. Chris. Yeah. Chris. I had God shot in my way onto a <laughs> boat with a with a sober crew. Yeah. It sounds like your higher power just right. guided yeah, you, know, you right whatever, there. Whatever, whatever happens, that's that's where I was. So right. we went out that day and I caught an eighty-five pound bluefin tuna. Yeah. Biggest tuna I caught in my life, probably fourfold. I think I caught something in the 20 pounds, and that was it. So it was a great day. Yeah. I had a lot of fun. Right. I said, okay, i got to do this again. And then get off the boat, immediately go back to the Malahini website, because i got to go with them, right? Yeah. And they're booked up, but you're one of your trips that late July, early August. Right, right. 
had an opening. So I said, all right, well, I don't know who Phil Friedman is, but I'll go, whatever. It's Malahini and all. Yeah, yeah, I can put up with anybody for yeah. 12 well, I mean, hours, yeah, right? I, I substitute teach, so I can do anything for yeah. one day. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like those unruly day. kids right? sometimes. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, so I get on the boat and, and, uh, and Nick comes, I come in, I say hi to Nick, and I say hi to Bill, and you walk on, we introduce ourselves, and, you know, Nick comes up to me, he goes, hey, you want to have a meeting on deck before, you know, on the way out? And I'm like, sure, it sounds great. And he goes, yeah, you know, it'll be Chris and, and me and you and Phil, and I got a couple other guys who want to do it. And in my mind, I didn't hear Phil, I heard Bill. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, and I thought it was a little strange. You know, we're on a boat and the captain's going to be in this circle and we're going to do our thing and, you know, have might a hit an iceberg and or talk something. about our gratitude yeah. and what we're, yeah, who's going to be steering the boat. <laughs> yeah. But I didn't, I didn't second guess it as we're not supposed to, right? Take, yeah. You know, take direction and don't ask why sometimes. Right. And uh, you walked into the circle that morning and I was like, oh, okay. And, you know, so we kind of started talking a little bit and we had that great, that was the, that was the day where we just ran into that giant, massive school of Dorado. Yeah, right. Yeah, you know, and, and it was a great meeting. I mean, I've never done anything like that before. Right, I'm grateful boat. to you for, you know, suggesting that. It was really unique, wasn't yeah, it? It was, it was great. Special. Uh, you know, right. And we got to, you know, kind of start our day. You know, I, I, one of the things I really appreciate is, is how... Oop. That's all right. Sorry, folks. Um, is how I manifest my day now. You know, it's like, so that was part of it. That day is just manifesting. Like, wake up, you know, make your bed, say your prayers, you know, align yourself with your day, figure out, you know, what did I do yesterday? What do I want to do better today? So yeah. I was in that moment on that deck of the yeah. boat, you know? And we go out, we have a great day. We have a great day. You know, uh, everybody, I think, caught some fish and some people caught a lot. And oh, I don't want to do this again. Yeah, and I, I got on your, I think it was early September, you, you booked another one that day. Yeah. And you said, oh, we got another one coming up. I'm like, I'm in. And <laughs> went out and I, I got another tuna that day. But that morning, on our second trip together, when we were doing this on the deck, I said, "There's got to be a, there's got to be something here. Yeah, you know, I can't be the only one that's sitting there, trying to figure out what what the other side of sobriety looks like. Yeah, you know, we fight so hard to get there, and then, you know, I I felt like I wasn't living in sobriety. Yeah, I was staying sober, not living sober. Understand, understand. And so that was kind of when 24 more was born, and you know, it, it's about getting like-minded sober people together to get out and do stuff. 24 yeah. more, meaning one day at a time, right, pretty much, day, right? Another, yeah. we're, we're, we're always in search of another 24 hours. Absolutely. Right? 24 more under yeah. our belt, we're healthy, we're happy. Yeah, right. So, you know, let's do it getting together and playing golf. Let's go fishing. You know, let's go on walks, let's go on hikes, bike rides. Um, so we're kind of in the infancy age on the on the webpage. This yeah. Our, we have our... Our first trip, our, our maiden voyage, if you will, on June twenty second. All right, uh, the Malahini. Oh, it's got to be the Malahini, right? Absolutely, the yeah. Malahini. We're going to go out and. Uh, What's that date again? June twenty second. June twenty second. Great. Friday, I believe. Yeah. And uh, the follow up, we have a second one on uh, July eleventh. Excellent. So we've got two this summer coming up. There's spots available on both. Prime time, man. Prime. Yeah, prime, prime. time. I've been watching the fish reports and seeing the tuna are creeping oh, their way. They're in creeping already. their way up. And, you know, so we're hoping crossing our fingers that oh. in a month and a half, two months time, yeah. we're going to be hitting it hard. I so, think it'll be great. You know, the, the, we'll have a meeting on the way out. We'll have a meeting on the way back. Uh, it's about, it's open to anybody who wants to be, who wants to fish in a sober environment. So know? it was that moment when we were together there, that special feeling that you had yeah. and what you wanted to do is you can't keep it unless you give it away, right? Right. And right. now you want to give it away. And that's what it is. That's what this is all about. Yeah. Getting as many people involved as we can to get out on the water. The the cost of the trip is the same as it would be. No, I mean, we haven't changed the cost of the trip. At right. All. It's still two thirty five. You got everything's included: your Mexican li license, your visa, your California fishing permit. All of that stuff's all included in the cost. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so it's just like going on any other boat, except this one's going to be sober. Okay. So they're going to lock the beer up, or how how is that yeah, logistically yeah, yeah. going to work? There's, it's just not. There's not going to be any alcohol available. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's going to be get on the boat, we're going to have a meeting, we'll go out, you know, Bill, as he says, you know, God, God, God steers the boat. Uh, That's right. Know. That's <laughs> and, right. He's uh, a very humble guy. Bill is a special, special friend He's a and a special, man. special guy. Great and man. you get that like almost instantaneously, don't you, when you meet him? Certainly. certainly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, if you don't, I'd, 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 I'd hate to see the person that, that doesn't see that. Yeah. That, you know I mean? He, it, that's probably a special kind of person too, just the other direction. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. What if you're a person that uh, 
um, well, how can I put it, that is in his infancy or hasn't even gotten one sober day. What if it's that person and he wants to go, but he might get tempted and want a beer on this trip. Um, well, anybody who goes, you got to go with the idea that you're not going to have a beer. That's 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 the or any other establishment. No, yeah, no, no drugs or alcohol of any kind. Right, this is a sober trip. Obviously, policing that is, you know, there's a certain <laughs> amount of integrity that you got to bring with yeah, you. Yeah, right. Honesty. You're not going to run around. And I'm not going to. No, you, you, you can't do bag. that. This isn't the airport. You're not going to open your bags and take off your shoes upon getting on board. Right, you know? but. Um, you know, we we're, that the idea is that we're all doing this together. You right. Know? Uh, one of so the what a great way if you are a fisherman and you love fishing, and you have this problem. What a great way to start because part of it is having something to you know. Sometimes boredom is what mm -hmm. leads you to alcohol. There's so many different factors, but right. I mean, not so if you're out there doing what you truly love. You might be able to put a day together and build. You right. know, twenty four more. Get you know, start. And then move on. And give yourself that the the understanding that there is something in life. You know that, that like being like sobriety isn't the end; it's the start. It's it's the beginning of this new phase of what you can. You truly, it's limitless. Is what you can do. You know, and that, I think for me, I know being you know uh, thirty eight years of drinking. Yeah. Uh, you know. I, I didn't know that I could do anything else. Yeah. I didn't know there was a way. It was the normal. There was no other way to live. Yeah, it was the normal, that point, right? Right, yeah. 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 It wasn't until my body completely gave out that I really didn't have another choice. What do you mean by that? You had some I, physical uh, problems? I, uh, November 12th of 2020 was my last drink. I was admitted to the hospital with uh, basically multiple organ uh, issues. Um, Organs were failing? Not so much failing in that. Well, I had uh, <coughs> sputtering a little I had bit. Distressed, uh, at a distressed uh, pancreas, uh, distressed gallbladder. My my upper and lower intestines were severely damaged. Um, uh, moderate cirrhosis of the liver. Um, uh, my kidneys were were malfunctioning, and I basically I I was admitted to the hospital because I couldn't keep anything down. I couldn't keep. I couldn't do anything. Everything wow. was coming out of me, yeah. Uh, ten ways from Sunday, and yeah, I, and none of it was pretty. And yeah. uh, so they admitted me to the hospital, and uh, you know that that was the beginning of the that was the beginning of the beginning. I guess that that was the beginning of that end and the start of a new beginning. I don't know, whatever the language is that that works best yeah, for, right. for the thing. But you know, I had to be at that moment where my body wouldn't do it anymore. Yeah, right. I'd already lost my family. You know, I'd already lost my job. I'd already lost all these other things that people would normally, you would think, would hey, shake you up. You know, and <laughs> yeah. It doesn't so work, the, does it? The, the, the world's trying to tell you something. Yeah, you know? I know. And it wasn't until I was laying on my back, staring up at those, you know, soft white glowing lights of a hospital bed, staring at a doctor telling me that basically, in no uncertain terms, if I continued living the way I was living, less than 50% chance I'd be alive in a year. Wow. So you're, 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 your body's just failing you. Yeah. You can't do this. I was, yes. Uh, I was 377.7 pounds. Oh my God! Look at you. Yeah, I'm 270 now. So wow! And in the and last of course, 17 months. Uh, in 17 months, I've lost over 100 pounds. Oh, man, that so, is such yeah. a great thing. And, and how do you feel? I feel fantastic. Yeah, I feel absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I go I go two three mile hikes up in the mountains, and that may not sound like a lot to some, but when I couldn't. Couldn't Get off the up. couch. I couldn't stand up. Yeah, you know right. I mean? Like walking to the refrigerator for another beer was the exhausting your exercise. Part of my day. Yeah, right. That you and know. smoking a cigarette, right? Yeah. Or your yeah, exercise. Yeah, you know what's funny is I gave that up in 2000. Oh, did you? Yeah. 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 2020, <clears throat> 2001. So I, yeah, I've been nicotine free for 21 the, years. There was a captain in uh, San Pedro that many people will remember. His name was John Dipley. And he said, my doctor told me to quit smoking, and I told him that was the only exercise I got. <laughs> <laughs> Funny guy. So yeah. that's great. I mean, yeah. your health has improved. You've lost all this weight. And we haven't even addressed the, your psychological attitude. I can right. only assume that it's right. way more positive and better, right? Every yeah, day is going to be better. It, 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 along those lines, it's like you, you got to give it away. You know, I feel like living a, in, a, in a purpose. You know what I mean? That's, that's the greatest part of what I get to do now is I get to kind of get be, I'm able to help other people and I get people that call me and friends you know hit me up go hey you know I've, I've been thinking about this for a long time I didn't yeah. realize you had a problem too and you know so it's nice that I get to be that sounding board for other people and maybe hopefully that that one nudge you know that one extra voice maybe that'll help them 
get to a place where they feel like they can they can do it in it, sobriety. I used to um, thank my sponsor, one sponsor in particular. I used to thank him all the time, and he'd start chuckling and <laughs> say, "I'm not doing it for you. I'm doing, I'm doing it, it for me." me. Yeah. And I didn't get it until I got it. Right. And it's that when you're really down, when you're really feeling lousy, be of service to others. Sounds counterintuitive, doesn't it? Right. right. Sounds like, you know, no, wait a minute, I'm the one hurting, right. you take care of me. Right, yeah. But when you reach out, for example, when I'm feeling that way and I make a Mexico run and help people south of the right. border. Amazing work. Well, you then you that. see, you see real problems. Right. Not the crap oh, yeah. that I'm worried about. You see people that are lacking food, clothing, living on the streets, right children that are in orphanages and then it just gets you centered and makes you say to yourself wow my problems aren't that big right and you know coming to someone like you for me who's got the experience in the problem that you have uh helps me with perspective you know because you know, i'm relatively new so to speak um you know at 17 months over yeah uh i've been trying for years but this is the lights out the longest uh streak of sobriety i have right um, you know, I get to have the ability to see what 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 can be. Yes. You know, and, and we try not to future trip and do those kinds of things, right? But we always want to know that there's some kind of security there. Yeah, you know, right. There, there's, there's a life past all of this. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, if I get through today, tomorrow has something for me. Yes. You know, so that's that's kind of what we try to do. We try to get through today. And, and that, I'd like to do it out on the water, fishing. Yeah, that's great. And you that's know? why you're reaching out with this great right. program, fishing. Mm -hmm. I mean, all our audience, even if yeah. you're not into the sobriety thing, but you yeah. think you can last the day without a beer, right. this would probably be or a great you, thing to do. Or you have somebody you want to support. Yeah, you know, exactly. Maybe, you know, maybe it's your son or your daughter or your brother or your cousin. Bring them out. Friend. It's great. Bring them out, give them one day of sobriety on the water, fishing with a, you know, create a unique fellowship that doesn't necessarily have anything to do with our addiction and everything to do with our survival. Yeah, yeah. You know, how, how do we want to live versus how did we get here? You know, and that's one of the great, I mean, fellowships are fantastic, amazing things. You know what I mean? Um, I would never say anything against like a great fellowship. And that's where we go for our partnerships. We get our sponsors, we get, you know, our feedback. We get, we get renewed, we get our energy every week, you know? Right. Um, but this fellowship is about, you know, you can be Narcotics Anonymous, Alcoholics Anonymous, Gamblers Anonymous, it doesn't matter where you're coming from, what your addiction or your affliction is, you get on that water and we're all the same people. Yeah, absolutely, you know, Greg. We share, that, we share that malady of the mind and the soul. Yes. And we, and we can cure ourselves, not cure ourselves, but we can save ourselves for one more day. Yeah, absolutely. You know, throwing a hook in the water. So you've talked about reaching out to others and that's what this program is all about. How important is gratitude to your sobriety? It's everything. It's everything. I uh, and your happiness. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. So, yeah. You know, I I, I uh, have an Instagram account. Uh, Twenty dot four dot more. The four is the number four. Just like twenty four more is a number. Uh, the word twenty, four, the word more. Um, and whenever I do a post, I always talk about being grateful for today. You know, and that that's really what it is. I mean, I can't I can't do anything without today. I, I don't have a tomorrow right. without a today. So right. I have to be grateful for what. I get today, you know, I, uh, I just had my, uh, I guess get medical on you. I had my upper endoscopy, my, one of my final ones yesterday. Yeah. And so I was in the hospital yesterday. With, everything's you know, good. Yeah, everything's good. I got a clean bill of health. All of the lesions in my stomach and my intestines are gone. Wow. And, uh, you know, it's amazing what a little, a good diet and some exercise and taking care of yourself and, so, and a you positive know, attitude. Yeah. And you get to see those things and I'm grateful. You yeah. Know, like, did I want to go get my upper endoscopy? No. <laughs> that yeah, that's not you know, on uh, anybody's. It wasn't, wasn't a list of things I thought maybe I'd like to do every three months. Exactly, you know? exactly. But the 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 side of it is that you know I get to be I get to see that you know as I work every day that there's there's a certain amount of that I'm getting back some some stuff for the effort that I put in. Yes, absolutely. And you know I then I can provide then perspective for somebody maybe somebody who's you know three months over. Yeah, that's got some physical issues and stuff. Right. Psychological, emotional, you know, medical things that they're trying to work through. Go look, man. This you can do this. Trust me. Yes. You know, it's hard. It's gonna hurt, but you can do it. And, and it's it, worth it. And it's worth it. Yeah. You got all of these people, all of these people that just want to stand there with you and do it with you. Your higher power. Um, I don't know who that is. You don't have to yeah. say. But how important is that to your sobriety? Um, my higher power. It, maybe no, no, it, maybe no, it, it isn't. It, it, no, it is. It's very important. And what you know, I was. Uh, I had this great this great sunrise uh, 
a meeting that I go to in San Diego every time I'm down there. Yeah. And uh, there was this old man in there with 38 years sobriety, and his father had just passed away. I say old, I'm in my 50s, goodness, right? So it was just perspective is, is, is a neat thing. Yeah. Um, you know, his father passed away, and he was an old lawyer from San Diego, and he had this giant law desk in his office. They were selling the house, so they had to get all the stuff out. Yeah. And this guy was talking about clearing the furniture, and he's like, you know, I could do 90-something percent of it by myself, and then I saw this desk. And he just thought to himself, there's no way. There's no way I'm going to get this desk out of this room onto the moving truck without help. And so he called a bunch of, he's called like six of his friends, and, and they all got together. They lifted this desk. They turned it, manipulated it, got it around corners, lowered it down the stairs, and got it out to the truck. And here's this guy with all this experience that, that, that came to this observation that he had to create a power greater than himself to get that job done. It had nothing to do with sobriety. But the, the lesson for him, he took it back into his sobriety saying, you know, we talk about a power greater than ourselves or you know, our higher power or whatever it is. I think that for me, that community, that fellowship, mm -hmm. the, um, the willingness to seek help, to realize that I am, you know, I'm, I'm, my will is not, my will got me here. <laughs> yeah, right. You know? <laughs> right, right. It's not going to get me out. And all that crazy stuff right, going on you know? in our heads, right? But, so I like to think of sobriety as a team sport. You know, I'm a huge sports guy. I played sports all my life yeah. growing up. And, um, you know, sobriety is a team sport. And we have to have the good teammates around us. That, that group gonna, consciousness is right, what... That are going to yeah. put us in the right path. And that we can fail in front of. Yeah. And have them pick us up. Yeah. And we can struggle and have them come and make sure that we all are successful together. You yes. know, we can lift this desk if there's six of us. Yeah, right. We can't lift it by ourselves. Right. You know, so that for me, that's my higher power, that, that greater conscious, that, that developing a, a power greater than myself through the community. That, that works. Keep, you know, so I keep a community around me at let's, all times. Let's go back to the fishing trip for a moment. Yes, um, please. Novice anglers. Like, Anybody. you got a drinking problem, but you've never gone fishing. But hey, this sounds fun. Malahini is a great boat to do it on. They'll, they'll, right. They've got a great crew, and if you walk up to Bill and say, I've never done this before, he's going to put somebody with you. You're going to get a lesson on the way out. Someone's going to be standing next to you if you hook a big so fish, you when know, you hook a big fish. I'm coming out with you on June 10th. Yes, I do know that. And my, my girlfriend and her son, her 14-year-old son, are going with us. Oh, how nice. And neither one of them has been get big game fishing. They go, you're oh, going to be in the right place. That's great. I've got a couple of fighting belts for him. You know, I'm going to give them a little lesson before we get on the boat. And, you know, I'm like, if either one of you hooks up, I'll reel in. I'll run over there. But, like, I, I know that instantly Nick's going to be at their side. Yeah, or right. Bill or you or me. You know, like, like there's just going to be people that are going to gravitate to her son. I'm going to videotape him <laughs> catching that giant. <laughs> right? Uh, like, uh, yeah, right. So I'm, I'm going to put water skis on him see if we can't get out there. That would be great. You that, you know. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, but that's part of it, you know. You get on that Malahini, and that's, what, that's why you go, right? You go because they take care of you. Yeah, because, exactly. You know, you know and, and I, I think Bill said it on your show. You know, he's like, we could go out and not catch fish. And yeah. And it be a great time. Exactly. Because you have the people, you have the community, you, have the, you just have this environment that's just so welcoming, warm, and friendly, and fun. The fish is, is nice. But, you know, we're, we're there for, for a lot of the other stuff, too. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, you know, and we've already said it, but you can't help but meet Bill and, and fall in love with a guy. And more than that, I mean, if you hear his story, how he battled cancer and he's mm -hmm. overcome a lot of problems, uh, he's just a guy that not only is to be admired, but perhaps emulated in some ways. He's I'd, a good man. I'd hope so. And a hell of a we, fisherman. We, we, could do a, we could do with a lot more bills in the world. Yeah, for sure, for sure. For sure. So uh, people book these trips through yeah. the Malahini website, or do they the go to your website? 24more.com. Oh, okay. The word 20, the number 4, the word more.com. 24more.com. Okay. We've got to click right there. Go on, you put in your number of riders that you want. You pay, uh, take credit cards, <laughs> all that stuff. And... Uh, and like I said, all the all the permits and visas are paid through that payment. And uh, all you need to do is show up with lunch and water. Uh, if you don't have any gear, you can get that at H and M Landing. Right. Where you can rent it, I think, through Bill's site. Um, so you know, there's really everything you need is accessible to you. It, like you said, if you're a novice fisherman and you want to just go out and try it, you know, then right. All the gear could be provided for you. And I would absolutely say, if you get on that boat and you don't 
you don't feel comfortable, let somebody know. Absolutely. Look I mean, that's the, the, sure they take care of you. that's the first thing you should do, right? Yeah. Just walk yeah. up and say, hey, I've never done this before. Hey, I think I've screamed over my shoulder every time I've hooked up on the Malahini. said, somebody you, get over here and help me. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> You're great on camera, man. I love it. All that excitement and enthusiasm. Man, my, I can remember you up in the, was that you? I'm pretty sure this was. I'm pretty sure, did Bill gaff a giant dorada yeah, for you and it fell off the gaff fell off and just gap, happened to go the right way? And fell back and fell into the boat. Yeah. He missed it on the first swing. Yep. Yep. And then he gaffed it and he was bringing it over and it came off the gaff but fell in the boat. Yeah. It was a nice. It, it could have gone either way too. Yeah. It was, it was a three something foot bowl. Yeah. It was solid beautiful, pounds. man. It was a nice fish. Those really were nice gorgeous fish. Dorado, man. Yeah. It was a great day. And this is 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. So it's a 12 hour yeah. trip. You're not out there One for day. a day. One but day. man, he'll, I mean, he'll go 40, he, we were 43 miles on yeah. one of those trips. That's a pretty, you know, good long run. Yeah, he'll chase it. They're going 65 right now in the day and a half. Chasing so it's getting enough. close. Yeah. It's yeah. getting close. Yeah, it's right there off Ensenada right yeah. now and yeah. creeping yeah. closer. Water warms up. Look at it. It could oh, be, it could, yeah. All could the be crazy. All the came in early this year and everything's working its way up the coast. And I'm making my albacore prediction later on, maybe even uh -oh. this evening. Uh-oh. Yeah, so whatever I say, <laughs> just, you know, if I bet on red, put Go your black. money on black. Hundred <laughs> percent. Fantastic. Greg, it's a pleasure to have you here on Always this really great. special okay. edition of Friedman Adventures. What you are doing it. is is a wonderful thing, reaching out. Like I said, sometimes when you're feeling down, you don't, you don't even think about helping others, but here you are taking a positive experience. You know how it's benefited you physically, mentally, right. your attitude, and now you want to give it to somebody else. And in the fishing business, in the fishing industry, within the context of an adventure on the water, what a great idea. It is really fantastic. Well, I, I thank you very much, but I also have a very good example in you. Oh. And somebody that I met last summer, I'm telling you, you're a huge part of the story, and I appreciate you know everything you've done so far for me. I, I, you're a sounding board. I text you all the time, and you text me back. You give me hints and stuff. So we're hoping to we're hoping to hit the ground running, and and like I I'll, I'll do one of these every day as long as we have enough riders. Yeah, perfect. So that's basically what it comes down. to. Yeah, you can do like I'm sure you can do half day trips for guys and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure this is gonna build into something great and you can count on me to let the public know about your trips I'm, and everything else. I'm, I'm here 24more.com. You can get me at 24more.spectre.gmail.com if you want any, inform any information. I'm happy to, to share out as much as I have. All right, Greg Spectre. So, what a pleasure, so. my friend. Have a great day. You too. Talk to you.